What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we're talking spring square bill fishing. Spring crankbaits, we're going in depth. I'm talking baits, colors, gear, all of it. Let's go. Springtime fishing just gets me excited. The fish are, are hungry, they're moving up, they're staging for that, that pre-spawn, that spawn transition. They're moving out of the deep and up into the shallows. You got warmer weather, everything is moving. The bait fish, the bass, and the baits. Spring crankbait fishing, more importantly, spring square bail fishing, is some of my favorite fishing of the entire year. Your, your fishing reaction, you're burning baits, you're pausing them, you're ripping through grass, and you're triggering those fish to eat that little crankbait. Today, I'm gonna to go in depth. I'm gonna talk about the different baits, the different sounds, different silent versus uh, sound, rattles, uh, hooks, colors, rods, reels, line, all of it to help you guys get prepared for this upcoming spring season. You know, we've done a lot of crankbait videos in the past, and uh, what you will notice is a lot of our wintertime tactics, our winter crankbait fishing, the way we actually fish these applies to spring square bills as well. Now, the cool thing about the square bill, as those fish move up shallow, pre-spawn, you can catch some of the biggest fish of the entire year. They're hungry, they're looking to bulk up for the spawn, and you can really key in on triggering those fish to bite. Now, a square bill, what's cool about a square bill is it will target, effectively target those shallow bass for really the, the remainder of the spring, summer, and into fall. It's also a phenomenal tactic to throw in the fall. Now, it will slow down a little bit come spawn. It's just slow down and sight fish and stuff, but pre-spawn, post-spawn, that summer through the grass and into fall as that grass dies off, a square bill is a must. So everything I'm talking about today is gonna to apply to your fishing throughout pretty much the remainder of the year into uh, next winter. So why a square bill? Again, we've done recent lipless crankbait videos in the last uh, week or so, but uh, you get to cover a lot of water. You get to really figure out where those fish are staging and really pick apart the big spawning flats. You know, we've talked about it in the past, but you get to, you get this bait moving, burning, pause it, and you can really trigger those fish into eating and show you where they are at. So a square bill, like I said before, is a phenomenal bait come springtime. So first off, I'm gonna break these square bills down into two important categories. The categories are rattle and silent no rattle as easy as that that's that's two two easy categories you know when you walk into a tackle shop there there can be 15 20 30 feet of shelf space of pegs of different types of crankbaits you know you go in there you look for the square bill section it might be 10 12 15 feet so today's video will really simplify the baits simplify the sounds and the colors so you guys know what to purchase when you head into your local tackle shop. You know, really not dummy it down, but make it simple for you, simplify it for you, because it, it really is a technique that you should try. If you haven't tried it, I highly challenge you guys to try it. If you guys are confident square bill fishermen, you already know what's up, and I got a few tricks for you today as well. So, silent and rattle. Now, how I decide which type of bait I'm gonna th throw really depends on two things. One, water clarity. If the water is really clear and I feel like the fish can see the bait coming from a long ways away or feel that bait coming from a long ways away, they don't necessarily have to hear it, I'm gonna go with that silent bait. You know, they're gonna see it, they're gonna feel it on their lateral line, um, in my opinion, I, me personally, I catch bigger fish on a silent square bill. You know, it's, there's no rattle, it's more natural. 
real bait fish in the water don't have tungsten knockers in them or BBs or anything like that. You know, the, the purpose of those is to really reach out and, and, and expand the area of fishing. But when you have those fish dialed in and you know where they're at, that silent square bill is where it's at. And like I said, I believe the silent ones get the bigger fish. So water clarity and pressure. If you're fishing an area or a body of water that gets an, a lot of, uh, of fishing pressure, a lot of square bill pressure, and those fish are constantly hearing you know, one knockers or BBs or rattles, you go into that same location and you throw a bait that is quiet, you will be surprised at the amount and the size of fish that you catch. So fishing pressure and water clarity. If the water is murky or you're out on a body of water that is not getting a lot of fishing pressure, you will catch more fish throwing a bait with rattles because you are effectively fishing a larger area. You know, not only do they see and feel it, but now they're listening to it. So they can feel that bait coming, they can hear that bait coming, and if the water is murky, you don't want to be throwing a silent bait because you're, you're really shrinking down that area you're fishing. If you add a rattle, that makes all the difference in the world. So, water, clarity, and fishing pressure for me are the two key features, the two key components of when I throw each. If I can, like I said before, I will try and go silent. So let's talk about, like I said, I got two, two categories. I have rattles and non-rattles, silent. So let's talk about rattling baits because I got a few key baits for you that I really want you guys to try and then we'll jump into the silent baits. So right off the bat, springtime fishing, um, what really makes it challenging is when you get those early spring storms that come in. You know, you're, you might be fishing a body of water or an area on the lake that has six, eight, 10, 12, 15 foot of visibility. And uh, you get that late storm come in and you get the wind, you get the creeks flowing, water moving, and all of a sudden you move, it, you got six, eight, 10 inches of visibility. Uh, that is when I'm gonna go with a bait with sound. So again, springtime, the water is warming up. You get those, those storms come in, they murk it up. That is how I decipher which type of bait I throw. And my number one favorite bait to throw this time of the year because of that unstable uh, weather is gonna be the River to Sea Biggie. Uh, this bait, Matt and I, we throw the heck out of it and we have caught tons of fish on it. It's got that real nice one knocker sound. It's not a, it's not, doesn't have that BB or that lipless crankbait sound, but it does have enough sound, that one knocker, to really, um, really put the fish in the boat. Um, the last tournament that Matt and I fished together was actually the Chamber of Commerce here tournament on Clear Lake. Uh, a few years ago and uh, we were struggling to get get them on glide baits and we picked up the biggie and we weighed the biggest bag in of the two-day tournament it was 34 pounds something and we caught every single one of them on a biggie you know they they just work you catch lots of fish and you catch big fish um, and that bait right there is a must now I'm gonna go into colors real quickly because I have three biggies sitting out. I'm gonna really simplify it. This time of year, you need a shad or a bait fish pattern, something in like a, a ghost minnow or something with a little bit of flash to it, more of an iridescent bait. That is for your real clear water. You need a craw pattern or some kind of red. We covered it in the last week's lipless crankbait video, but when you get up shallow and you're burning a, a crawfish or a red pattern square bill through bull rushes or toolies or riprap, whatever it may be, that red is a must in the springtime. And then when you get those storms that come in and really murk up the water, go with some kind of white and chartreuse. 
those are really the three main colors that I throw. You know, you can branch off of it a little bit, but keep it simple. A clear baitfish color, a red crawfish color, and some kind of chartreuse, something they can really see. So we talked about the biggie. The two other ones I really want to talk about. Uh, one is going to be the six cents crush, the 50 and the 100, two different sizes. Um, but that is a phenomenal square bill. You know, Six Sense has tremendous colors. They have a color selection that is uh, really unmatched by most. It, it, they have you know, 40, 50, 60 colors sometimes, and uh, most of them look awesome. But uh, that Crush 50 is another must have. And then this guy right here, the Spro Little John, little different profile. But this guy is a little winner, man. He, it's a little bit, a little bit smaller profile than your traditional like 1.5 or 2.0 size square bill. It's got a real narrow body. It's got that microchip lip, different action. But this guy is money. And one of their new colors I really like is this guy right here. This is their new color. Just taking it out of the package is matte shad. That thing is a ghost minnow color, but it's got an iridescent kind of purple line through it. That is gonna be killer. Uh, I can't wait to, to check that thing out in the water. So those are my three favorite rattle or non-silent baits, um, square bills for springtime. Now let's talk about silent. Now, like I said before, let me move the trolling motor real quick so the sun's not in your guys' eyes. Like I said before, from my experience, my experience, I catch bigger fish on silent square bills. Now, I don't know if that's because the bait can really get up on them and they don't hear it from coming a long ways away. It doesn't spook them. I'm not sure which, you know, really how to put my finger on it, but it just, for me, it, it happens. And, uh, Really the bait that that really kind of set the mark for square bills is a 1.5, a Lucky Craft. You know, there's other baits, other manufacturers on the market that actually call their baits 1.5s, 2.5s, but Lucky Craft is really what put the 1.5 on the map. This is another silent bait. Um, very, very good paint jobs, very quality split rings and, and, and hooks, but um, more importantly, they are fish catchers. So a 1.5 in a silent square bill is probably my number one most used square bill, that guy right there. Now staying with the Lucky Craft, I got a little tip for you too um, about, about depths and all that stuff because that really applies. We're gonna talk about that in just a second once we get through baits. But the BDS-3, Again, another silent bait. Man, those hooks are sticky. Silent bait, but it's a little bit different profile, a little different size than a 1.5. And this bait runs shallower. Got a little tip for you guys. If you guys are like me and you forget exactly what depth a square bill runs, take a Sharpie. Thought I had one on me. Take a Sharpie and write the actual max depth on the top of your bait. So this guy right here is a three footer. This guy right here is a four footer. It's a smaller profile, dives deeper. Where that comes into play this time of year, as those fish are moving shallow and they're getting up in the stuff and the vegetation, the grass, uh, the hydrilla, whatever you guys are fishing is growing up. You guys want these baits diving down. You don't want them diving down into the grass, but you want them diving down and just ticking the tops of the grass. When you hit that grass, you pop it, and the bait shimmies off or, or uh, hunts off to the one side or the other, and that is nine times out of 10 when you're gonna get bit. So a key feature on a square bill is the diving depth. So a little tip for you. Take a Sharpie and write the depths on the top of your crankbaits. That way you always know what area you're fishing, the depth you're fishing, because uh, that definitely comes into, into play 
especially out here on the west coast you know we have reservoirs that fluctuate so much you know even here on clear lake it's a natural lake but this year is three feet shallower than last year uh, so you're going to be fishing different areas and you need to know the depths uh, that you can hit that vegetation effectively to not just bury in and foul your bait you're just ticking the tops and getting those reaction bites so so that's a little tip for you two more baits i forgot one two more baits i want to talk to you about again this is the strike king 1.5 uh, this little guy right here this dives six feet so again all depends on your depth uh, which depth you want to fish effectively so this bait runs a little bit deeper than the others that i've talked about that is a must and then also the mega bass s crank that that crankbait i've got to play around around with it now for a couple years and it's 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 special it uh kind of hunts on its own so you don't have to really add any deflection uh, to it. it it naturally wants to track and then cut off so that is again we're triggering these fish hopefully you guys see the the similarities in the lipless crankbait video swim baits you know your straight trick them baits versus the the glide baits where you twitch and you make those fish react you trigger them it all applies with crankbaits as well so you fire this bait out you you figure out the bait that you want is the water clear is it pressured is it murky how deep do you want it to go do you need to go two to five or two to three three to six whatever it may be you pick the right bait fire it out there burn 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 pause burn 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 pause just like fishing our crankbait in the winter time you want to burn this thing fast you want it to act like a little bait fish up there scared for its life running for its life and as you hit that piece of grass or dock piling or top of your rock pile and you burn 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 pause and then you hop it or you deflect and you pause that is when you're gonna get your bite so those are the baits those are the colors remember keep it simple now let's talk gear one very 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 important component to square bill fishing is hooks now i upgrade all of my hooks on my crankbaits you're up and i do it often you're up shallow you're fishing two to five or six feet you're just down there dredging right your your hook points are gonna become dull eventually coming through that mud that chunk rock grass whatever it may be you're just gonna dull your hook so constantly check your hooks more importantly constantly upgrade or change out your hooks now my absolute favorite square bill hook is gonna be this guy right here this is the owner stinger treble short shank but what's special about this bait, um, this hook, is it has 150 degrees between these two outside trebles, two outside hook points. What that allows that to do, if rigged correctly, there is a proper way to put on treble hooks. I'm gonna show you right now. You want the flat side of this or any other normal treble, you want a hook point down. You want that to be able to rest against the belly. That way you don't have a hook that's rotated. You have a hook down and you're going to come up with a lot more foul baits, hung up baits. On your back hook, you want a hook up. So the benefit of these hooks, see how they're flat, almost flat right here. So you got almost flat on the belly. You have two hook points out the side of the bait. Hopefully you guys can see that. You got one down below. And then on the back, you have a hook point up and two that are flat so you don't snag up as easily. These have been killer hooks for me. I love them. Um, haven't had any, any complaints with them. Now, the other hook that I will use, if you guys are into short shanks, definitely try uh, those hooks out. You know, the benefit of a short shank, you can upsize your hook size so you can go from a a two to a one, but they are shorter in height. If you're worried about your hooks actually hooking themselves and fouling up, that is when you can upsize your hooks and go 
with a shorter shank so you won't get fouled. Non-short shank hooks, uh, my second favorite um, day in and day out is gonna be the Owner ST36 treble. You know, twos, fours, sixes, one aughts, depending on the size of the bait, that is an absolute staple in our fishing. So ST36, uh, one other short shank hook that I wanna mention because these are awesome, this is the Mustad short shank um, KVD hook. It's the KVD triple grip. I, I get these ones if I want to run a red treble on the belly hook. Those are great hooks. And the last hook that I use is gonna be a Gamakatsu EWG. It's the difference between an EWG and a round bend. Round bend, your hook points are kinda straight. An EWG, they're angled in. The benefit to an EWG, if they are just eating that bait, you have the color dialed, you have the location dialed, and they are just choking this bait. When they get the EWGs penetrated in their mouth, it's got that angled in point, it's harder for them to spit the bait. But if you are burning this across the flat and they're just coming up and slapping at that bait or slashing at that bait, go with the short shank, the, the owners, or the round bends um, you will get more fish in the boat with that. So that is hooks. So four different styles of hooks. I, I will link all this stuff down below in the video description so you don't have to try and remember all this or take notes. Um, it'll all be linked down there below. So we've talked baits, some key baits for you. We've talked conditions, you know, what water clarity and fishing pressure does to your bait selection. The only other thing that I want to talk about is your actual rod and reel line setup. Now, you guys have heard us rave about this rod in the past. This is the, the, the Loomis, this is the IMX Pro 845 CBR. Now this rod, it's a, it's a composite rod. It's, it's a, a slower taper, a slower action. So this rod has more parabolic bend. It's gonna bend deeper into the rod. It's gonna be less tippy, and that, that rod is gonna load up, and, and it's gonna keep those fish from coming off. Now, a lot of guys like to throw a straight up glass rod. So just like, like I explained about that parabolic bend and that, that rod loading, a glass rod's gonna load even deeper. It's gonna be slower to load and slower to unload. If you are fishing just a big flat, you can get away with a glass rod. They, they work great. You, you're gonna lose less fish. Um, but for me, I like to fish isolated grass patches and I want, or any, any structure for that matter, I want my bait to be as reactive as quick as possible. When I'm burning that bait and I pause or I hit a piece of grass or I deflect off of a, a piece of wood and I pause that bait or I, or I reel twitch that bait, I want that bait to do it right now. I don't want that glass rod to slowly unload and then load back up. I want it, I want it quick but it's a, it's a fine line. I don't want that, that rod to have a super fast tip because with the treble hook baits, you will lose a lot of fish. So like I said, that 745 or 845 CBR is a, a perfect rod, perfect lipless rod, perfect square bill rod. The benefit of going with that shorter rod is you can be more accurate in tight cover. If you're fishing like a, a riprap wall or just an open bay, you can get away with a seven six, you know, seven foot six rod, um, but I typically like to throw a little bit shorter rod, a seven foot, seven two, something like that. Um, hopefully that makes sense on the actions. Now right with that, goes hand in hand, I throw braid to leader. Again, I said I want that bait to be reactive. We want to trigger these fish. When you rip that bait through or you deflect off of something and that that rod is real responsive. That braid is a must. Uh, no stretch, it's more sensitive. 
and you get that quicker reaction time, that quick, quicker response time from, from your handle twitch or your rod twitch down to the bait. Transfers that a lot quicker than um, mono or you know, let's say fluoro. What I will say is on a square bill, I run a lot longer fluorocarbon leader. It'll, it could be 12, 14, 15, 20 feet long. Uh, you know, I'm making long casts and I don't want those fish to really see that braid um, right as they see that bait go by. I, I want the benefits of the braid, but I want the, the, uh, the clarity of the fluorocarbon. So I'll run a little bit longer leader than I will on most baits. But uh, reels, it's gonna be a, typically a, a burner, like a seven to one or even an eight to one. I don't wanna have to turn that reel as, as fast as I can, you know? If the less handle turns, the easier throughout the day. You know, a lot of this stuff applies to the lipless crankbait video I did uh, last week or the week before. But square bill fishing, you guys, I challenge you, if you haven't tried it, it's an absolute must come springtime. When you can get up shallow and you can cover a lot of water, you can find those staging fish you know, those big schools of fish as they pull up shallow and they're looking to where they're gonna spread out and spawn. You know, that's that pre-spawn staging, a square bill is a, an awesome bait that deflects off a of cover and covers a lot of water. And like I said, they will catch big ones. I think that's just about it. I hopefully I didn't miss anything. If I missed something, I'll leave it down below in the video description. But square bill fishing, you guys, I challenge you guys to try it. Those who do it already know, try out some of those other baits that I talked about because they are all winners, you guys. Just like every video down below in the video description, I will link all of this stuff. The hooks, the colors for each bait, uh, the sizes of baits, and uh, you know, one thing I didn't talk about is a lot of these baits are avail available in the same style and color in rattle and non-rattle. So when you go into the tackle shop or you're shopping online, um, hopefully this simplified things, grab a couple of each because there will be days that one outfishes the other based on those conditions that I talked about. As always guys, we appreciate you. If you learned something from this video, please remember to give us a like. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. We're coming up on 300,000 subscribers and uh, it's it's awesome and so if you guys like this video and you and you haven't subscribed please hit that subscribe button uh, we appreciate it you know that's what we're here for we're trying to teach you guys and uh, we don't know everything but we'll share with you what we know to help you guys put more fish in the boat as always guys we appreciate you have a good one